So it's been a bit since uh, I did a video, and, and today I wanted to do one uh, talking about um, some of the tooling, tooling issues. We've had questions um, regarding our ring kits and the, the mandrel, and so I wanted to go through um, some little, little technical information about runout, uh, total indicated runout, concentricity, just kind of some of these issues that you might be encountering or you could encounter uh, to help um, sort of uh, tune up your, your turning for these small these small items. So we'll be starting off um, talking about concentricity, um, runout or total indicated runout, um, and then kind of getting into some actual measurements. I've got a, a dial indicator, and we'll and we'll be measuring um, some some runout here today. So I've drawn, um, got a lathe sitting over here. I've drawn. A uh, little schematic of, of the lathe. I've got the spindle block, the mounting block here, where the spindle and the cartridge would be installed into this uh, block. Got the spindle nose, the threads on the spindle nose. Uh, and I, I drew in a you know, this dash. The pin line is uh, like your, your number two Morris taper that's bored through the spindle nose. So I want to just uh, kind of outline concentricity and run out. So let's say we uh, we've got our we've got our chuck. We're going to screw this chuck onto the spindle nose, and you know maybe these threads are are worn, or um, maybe there's some gunk. So we'll screw this uh, we'll screw this on. Okay. So first we'll project out. We've got this center line that's projected out that comes from the spindle nose, and um, let's just. Let's just say we're going to be looking this direction at the spindle nose. So we'll come out here and we'll draw we'll draw the, the center line, and we'll just say that so that's the spindle nose, and we have the threads that go around this this uh, board out uh, number two taper. Okay. So we screwed on this chuck, and then we're talking about maybe it's not sitting completely um, centered with, with uh, the spindle nose. So, so now let's say the center line of the chuck is not concentric, is not lined up with the center line of, the, of rotation with the, with the spindle nose. Okay? So if we say here's the center line of the chuck, okay, so we'll draw We'll draw the chuck here. Okay. So now when the spindle starts rotating, this center line will rotate about the center line of rotation, which is the center line of the spindle. Okay, so now if we take and measure this diameter using an indicator, we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so we're going to measure this run out to give us an idea of, of how concentric these two circles are. Okay, we will not be spending time talking about G, D, and T. Okay, so, so for those of you out there who understand geometric dimension and tolerancing, I'm not brushed up on that this evening to, to be talking about that. I do, I do know about that, but um, we're, we're not going to get too deep into G, D, and T and going into feature control frames and all of those things. Okay, so so this is sort of a, a constant an example of concentricity uh, issues that could be brought on by a chuck just being you know, mounted on the spindle nose. Okay, so now there's another scenario. Okay, we're going to talk about angularity. Okay, so if again this is the center line of rotation of the spindle. Okay, now let's say we're going to put something inside of the number two Morris tape. And maybe maybe we've gotten some uh, you know some residue of glue in here or some junk or something that was stuck back in there. We we uh, stuff our number two Morris taper into the spindle nose, and it's being um, offset, uh, off you know, made off axis because of some debris. So now we have a new. So now maybe I'll draw this exaggerated, but the center line. Of, of rotation of this 
tool that we just put in there might be uh, off axis, okay? So now, as the spindle rotates, if we were to take a measurement with our indicator, here, let's say it was five thousandths, and then we were to come out another distance here, then it would be growing, because this is off axis, so this would be, say, ten thousandths, and, and so on, it would be getting increasingly larger. Whereas when we talked about the chuck, that would stay, in theory, if we didn't have any angularity issues, in theory, that would stay the same, regardless of where we were taking the measurement. Okay, so now we're gonna move over here, and just before we get into doing some measurements, we'll just talk briefly about uh, decimals, just to refresh you if you haven't uh, used these in a while. Um, we'll be using an indicator today that has an accuracy of five ten thousandths. Okay, so we have three zeros, 0 0.0005, okay? So the fourth decimal place is the ten thousandths, the th ten thousandths. So that's five ten thousandths. This also can be known as half a thousandth or half thou. The third decimal place is thousandths, the second is hundredths, and the first is tenths. So the indicator we have, each graduated mark, is a half thou uh, of movement. So when we watch this indicator move, uh, move, it's only moving five ten thousandths. You know, you watch the indicator, it looks like it's a bunch, but it really is not that much movement. Um, so anyway, we'll get over here, we'll, we'll do some measurements on uh, some of these concentricity, um, angularity. So let's do that now. Okay, so we've got a four-jaw chuck here um, that will screw on the spindle nose. We've got the ring mandrel that we sell from Wildwood Design, making uh, your own custom rings. Um, got the jet lathe, uh, here's a spindle nose we talked about, you're familiar with that. Uh, and then we've got a, uh, a uh, magnetic base or mag base indicator. Here's the uh, half thousand style indicator. And then we'll screw on the spindle nose and we'll take a measurement. Okay, so we'll screw this on, okay, we'll slide uh, the indicator in, and we'll try to get a good enough close-up view here, okay, so you can watch this yourself, okay, so, so as you can see, as you see, so that's, back there it's about six thousandths, so I'll just count it off. So, that's about a half thou under zero. And then uh, three, four, five, five and a half, six. So this is, this is a total indicated run out of six and a half thousands. So, um, we don't know right now if it's caused by, you know, concentricity or angularity, or probably a combination of both. Um, but this just gives you an idea, six thousandths. If it was concentricity, back on the drawing, we were looking at the center lines. So that would be, if it's six thousandths, the difference between center lines is three thousandths. Um, which is starting to get enough uh, that could cause you some issues with rings. I would say, you know, if you start getting into the three to five, that's going to be, that's probably not going to be good. So now we'll, we'll mount this same mandrel up to a different setup and we'll take another measurement. Okay, so this is a different type of chuck. It's a collet chuck. Um, comes with, uh, I don't know, half dozen different collets. We've got the half inch collet here. So again, when we start talking about just accuracy, uh, you're gonna make sure that this, this is another taper. You wanna make sure that's clean, that the collet is clean. You don't have any debris or, or anything built up on this. So. We'll push that in there, okay, and then we'll screw this on. We'll get our um, ring mandrel. We'll put this in here, okay. And similarly, when we go to, um, you know, it comes with a tool. You can really crank this down. You know, when you go to put this in your number two Morris taper, you're going to make sure this is clean, free of any debris. You know, you really don't want any dings, nicks, anything that would could cause this to. Um, be, uh, have some angularity issues. Okay, and when you come over with your spindle nose, you know, this number two Morris taper, they actually sell uh, cleaning sticks 
if you can go inside and clean this up if it's getting kind of uh, crudded up. Again, you really want to stay away from trying to get any dings on either of those. So we'll just um, we'll just go ahead and mount this in there. Give it a good you know thump to get that pressed in place. Okay. Okay. So we'll position the um, the indicator. Okay. So we get this zeroed, close to zero. So here we have zero, and there's one, two, three, about, about four thousandths. Okay, and yeah, let's stop in just about a half thou, so actually like three and a half thou. So three and a half thousandths, so again, half of that dimension, so about, you know, you're, we're talking about 1.7, 10 thousandths, um, is if it were concentricity. So now, now we're getting down where really for woodworking, that's pretty darn good. Um, you know, standard machining tolerances on, on um, you know, Mechanisms might be plus or minus two thousandths, um, you know, really tight fit plus or minus one thousandths. So we're talking about a concentricity of uh, you know one and a half, two thousandths uh, of off center is really not too bad when we're talking about woodworking. So we can see we improved um, the uh, the center of rotation um, by going to something that's mounted into number two. Morris taper. Now, why is that? Um, when when we compare putting something inside the machined taper, okay, that that's a, that that is a tight fit. Um, that's bored to the center line of rotation, and um, versus when we're screwing uh, something on the spindle nose, you know these threads have tolerances, so that it has a sliding fit, and, and obviously it has some play in there, and um, just. Uh, screwing on threads is never going to be as accurate as mounting something inside your number two Morris taper. Another thing to consider is this length of stick out. Uh, the longer it gets, if we have any angularity, the, the more troubles you're going to have. So you really want this to be as short as possible going into this number two. You know, ideally, um, we, would, we would have, you know, this... Um, Ring mandrel just have a, a number two machine right on that as well, so that could go right in there without having to do this. The, the trick is getting this uh, press fit, the number two uh, taper is pretty highly tolerant. Um, and to get that to stay inside of the spindle without, without uh, rotating um, can be a challenge. Okay, um, so I've uh, screwed on this uh, Barracuda 3000 for Four jaw chuck. This is the one I mostly use. Um, turned a little bit on this um, resin cast maple plug. Uh, got that clamped in place, and we got our dial indicator up. I haven't turned this surface yet. Just kind of wanted to show you this. Okay, so the indicator is touching um, down here. We'll just put a tick mark right here so we know when we get um, back full rotation. So let's just see. Uh, what happens as we go. Okay, so first off you're going to see the indicators bouncing around a lot. That, that's a, a surface finish issue, so really we're, we're looking at just dif different um, you know, bumps in the surface, but we're looking for sort of grand scale in this needle. So, so we start around zero, okay, and now there's, uh, there's five thousandths, okay, now we're ten, down around, oh, it's around twelve, coming back up, Okay, so back to zero. So, so we're going to be uh, 12 to 15 thousandths um, of concentricity or run out uh, of this plug. So now we'll turn it in place. I won't, I won't um, unclamp it. I'll just turn this and we'll do another measurement and we'll see, uh, we'll see the difference. Okay, well, finish turning this. Okay. And let's put the indicator back in place here and um, we'll 
take a look and see. Okay. So, so obviously it took out some of the bumps. The surface finish is a lot smoother. Um, let's see, let's put a little tick mark right, right here. So we're starting about zero right there. That was plus one, minus one. So this is full of variations, you know, now we're coming back around. So really we've turned this within, you know, plus or minus one thousand. You know, that is really good. So now let's do something real quick, um, which you probably, and a lot of you already know this, but it's just interesting to do this. So now we'll unclamp this, okay. Okay, and we'll rotate it just a little bit, okay. So you know, in theory, if everything was perfect, you'd be able to clamp it, unclamp it, right? You're clamping on the same surface. Um, really, in theory, it's why, why should it be different? And those of you who know not to unclamp your work, will, will know what's about to happen here. Okay, so we'll, we'll get the indicator up again. We've got the tick mark. It's really sensitive. But Okay, we'll get it back near zero again. Okay, all right, so here we go. So we're at zero, and that's about where we started last time. So now we got five, uh, eight, 10, 11, And plus, plus one. So now simply unclamping it, I moved it, you know, maybe 10 degrees, reclamped it. Uh, now we've got a concentricity problem of 12 thousandths. Again, half of that distance, when we looked at the, the two center lines, if we move the center line out six thousandths, it's going to be rotating about the, the axis of the spindle rotation. And we'll be doubling that six thousandths, making it twelve on the total indicated runout. And and again, so a lot of you know this, you never unclamp your work until you're done. Um, there's a lot to, uh, to be careful with, again, especially when we're dealing with the, the rings, um, when we're working with these small um, mandrels um, and the and the metal and the wood, trying to make sure that that it looks, uh, you know, like a, a quality finish. And so we just want to make sure um, to use the best possible tooling that we can uh, to, to achieve the best result. So that, that concludes today's uh, little session on concentricity, runout, total indicated runout. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, really appreciate everybody's feedback. And uh, thank you for all your uh, support to all my customers. Uh, like us on Facebook and sign up for our newsletter. We'll continue putting out videos. Happy turning.